Hello, welcome all. Welcome to Preaching Jesus Effectively. And I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us. We are doing this to learn more about preaching, learn more about how to share the gospel effectively. Before we dive in to this presentation, let's join for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray you could bless us as we come together and speak about sharing your word more effectively. I pray that you will bless anyone that is going to watch this, that they can, whether they're preparing for a sermon, whether they're an elder, youth, uh, SAP school leader in their church, prayer meeting leader, I pray that you can bless their preaching and use them in a mighty way to share Jesus and win more souls for the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so I'm going to share my presentation with you all. Let's see if we can get this. Okay. So here we have it. This is our digital lay preaching seminar for preaching Jesus effectively. We're going to have new videos every single week, and we're going through these 28 videos. We already did the significance of preaching Jesus, the model for preaching, preaching the divine calling, and now we're on here, ambassadors for Christ, all right, ambassadors for Christ. My name is Christopher Finley. I am the founder of Advent Preaching. And our mission is to train and equip lay preachers to preach, whether it be an elder, whether it be a youth, whether it be anyone who has taken a leadership role in the church. And there are many churches where they don't have uh, pastors there, leaders that preach every single week. So what we are called to do is train and equip lay preachers, members to preach the gospel so that the gospel can be shared throughout the whole world and this is based on scripture matthew 24 14 this gospel will be preached to all the ends of the earth and then the end will come so that's what our goal is in our mission so we ask that you join us in our mission you pray for our ministry you share this ministry with your leadership your conference your elders your board where we can come and we can partner with you on a digital lay preaching seminar in person or digitally so we can help your evangelism for your church and overall spirituality for your members to preach Jesus and know how to share their faith more effectively. So first, let's talk about ambassadors for Christ. What are ambassadors? Ambassador is when you represent a brand. Like if you see like an athlete, they're representing Nike or Under Armour. This is what an ambassador is. An ambassador represents that brand, speaks highly of that brand, has the same culture, motives, goals. That's when you see ambassadors. That's what you call ambassadors. So as preachers, we are ambassadors for Christ. The same mind that Christ has, we are called to have. The same way that Christ walked, we are called to walk. So when we think about what are ambassadors for Christ, before we think about preaching and what the calling entails, we must understand what a true ambassador for Christ is. Let's start with this scripture, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So this is so powerful because we use this as our foundation text for this part of the series, part four. We're planning on going through 28 part series. So by the end of this, by the grace of God, we all can learn more about the art, craft, and divine calling of preaching. When we look at this text, go into all the world, this is a command, and preach the gospel to all creation. And now, not only is this a command, but this is a calling where God is putting on our lives as ambassadors, as preachers, go into the world, preach the calling, share that love, share salvation through Jesus Christ. The gospel minister is an ambassador for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God. So when we think about ambassadors, we are representing the kingdom of God. So everything in our life must correlate, must align with, must represent the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. So as preachers, before we put our sermons together, before we try to improve our preaching, this scripture 
changes our lives and how we look at preaching as a divine calling, because we are called to represent Jesus in everything we are do, everything we do through our life. God is using us to shine a light, to make an appeal through us. And we are sharing Christ. We are begging people through the love of Christ, through our example, through the way we walk to be reconciled back with God. So when they see our love, when they see us as representatives, when they see us as ambassadors, when we pray for others, when we preach to others, when they see the Holy Spirit working through us, God is using us in a mighty way to appeal to them that they can experience freedom and victory in Jesus Christ also. So when we think about ambassadors for the kingdom of God, this is a perfect example, 2 Corinthians 5.20. And guess what? There's always hope for ambassadors of the kingdom of God, because Isaiah 40, 31 says, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. So as ambassadors for God, we are relying, we are waiting, we are having patience for the Lord in all that we do. And he is the one giving us strength. We don't get strength on our own. We get strength from the source. And he's going to lift us up in mighty ways according to his will. And when we run, when we run for the Lord, when we are filled with the spirit, we're not going to get tired. And when we walk with Jesus, we're not going to be weary. So these are, when we answer this divine calling for Jesus Christ, we have to understand that there's hope. There's hope for us as preachers that God is going to give us the strength we need. Now, this is where it's so important. As ambassadors, we must run after our destiny. As ambassadors, we must be ready to preach. Say yes to preaching the word of God. I remember when I was a freshman and I got an opportunity to preach in Stevensville, Texas, which was two hours away. I used to drive two hours there and then drive two hours back after I was done preaching. And you know, it was, it was a long drive and it was interesting because I was so excited to preach. I was so excited to preach and just have an opportunity to share Jesus. The church had about four people sometimes, but I was so excited to share the gospel of Jesus Christ that I said, yes, I went. And that's what I want to encourage. If you feel called to preach, if you feel called to share the gospel, even if you have to drive an hour, even if you have to drive two hours, go share the gospel because these opportunities help you to learn, to improve, to see that God is with you, to see our lives be changed, to see transformation, not only in others, but even in yourself. So ambassadors, we must be ready. We must be ready to preach, ready to share Jesus. Preach, preach, preach Jesus. It is a blessing. And we have to understand this too. Ambassadors, we are led by the Holy Spirit. We are led by the Holy Spirit, all right? So Romans 8, 14 says, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So in order to be a true ambassador, in order to preach Jesus effectively, we have to be led by the Spirit of God, led in our preaching, led in our study, led in what type of series we're going to do for our church. We have to be led because without being led, we can't be a true ambassador. So when we think about what am I going to preach? What am I going to do next? We follow Romans 8, 14. We let the spirit of God lead us so that we know that we're truly sons of God. And we, it leads us into, okay, what am I going to preach for this prayer meeting? What do the people need, Lord? Help me to fill their needs. Help me. Because what our mission is, is we want to be better at sharing the gospel more effectively. And the only way we are going to improve with the greatest capacity if it's being improved and transformed by the Holy Spirit. We could try it in ourselves. We could study. We could read. But we need the Holy Spirit to lead us, to show us the way to go. And that's the, the blessings that God has for us. So as ambassadors, the number one thing we are called to do is uplift God's word. Whenever, whatever you're called to preach, preach the word of God, because that's where the power comes from. We could tell great stories. We can try to entertain people. We could try to do many things, but it's never going to have the same effect as when we uplift God's word. Jesus says, when I am lifting up, lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. I will draw all humanity to myself. So now when we look at God's word, 
the word became flesh. The word is Jesus. So as we preach Jesus, that is what's going to bring people to be transformed. And not only just preaching about the word, preaching through the word, it's a difference. You could preach about a Bible story. You could preach about a word, but it's a difference when you take the main point, the punto principal, the main point of the sermon, and you get it from the text, from the scripture. So you're literally opening the strip scripture to those who are listening. It's a big difference from preaching about the word and preaching from the word. All right. So here we see some might say, ah, oh, it's not going to be easy being a preacher. It's not going to be easy sharing the gospel. Well, we need to understand God protects and blesses his ambassadors. Psalms 105, 13 to 50, is when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. So not only are we called to preach the word, uplift the word, live a holy life, but we are guaranteed the protection of God. And if anything happens to us, for example, John the Baptist, what he had to go through, we are trusting that this is God's will for our lives. We are trusting that God has our best interests at heart. So God has a high regard for his chosen people. Many are called, but few are chosen. So if you have this call over your life and you are chosen by God to, to preach his word, to share his gospel, in faith, believe that you are protected. You have the light of God over your life. He is with you wherever you go, okay? So look at how through these nations, God protected his people, protected his people. And, and he had this saying over their life, do not touch my anointing and do my prophets no harm. So we have to know that this is the blessing that comes with preaching Jesus effectively, that we have the protection and blessings of God over our lives as his ambassadors. When we as preachers consecrate our lives to God, we accept his protection, his care, will, and blessings to overflow in our lives. We then preach from the overflow of goodness for God. So now we, we make a decision to God. We say, God, you're calling me to preach Jesus. And I want to do the best that I can do for you to preach Jesus effectively, right? The reason why this is so significant is because when we preach Jesus in a mighty way, when we consecrate our lives to God, this is where we're accepting the full amount of his protection, his care, his will, his blessing, and because we have his love overflowing out of our lives. And that's when we preach from the perspective of the true victory in Jesus Christ. People will see the joy. People will see the passion. People will see the amazingness that God is doing through our lives because we are connected to him. So before we talk about the ins and outs of forming a sermon and making a sermon manuscript, without this consecration of our lives to God, without this care, without this his will, without his blessings over our lives, we are cutting ourselves short. We are not preaching with the full potential that God has for us. So the preacher is called to be consecrated, even down to our very words. We are called to speak knowledge in every aspect of our life, and we are be called to be well-read. Look at how Jesus, he used uh, illustrations from the trees and a vine and to the seeds and to birds and to farmers and to um, ovejas, uh, sheep. Look at all these things that Jesus did. So we need to be well-read and to know about nature, know about God's creation, know about health, know about the health message, to know about food and know about seeds and planting and gardening, things that connect with people's lives, right? And when it when we say the preacher's called to speak knowledge in every aspect of our life, when it comes to like joking and using common words and jokes just to try to relate to people, we don't have to dumb ourselves down or bring ourselves down to a lower level just to relate to people. We have to have faith that the power in the love of Jesus Christ is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. We can be loving. We can be kind. We can be a listening ear to others. We don't have to tell jokes and try to make people laugh just to make them accept Jesus. We don't have to be like jokers. You know, sometimes we see people who call themselves preachers, but everything's a joke. 
And I'm not saying that we're supposed to be serious all the time, but we have to understand that people watch us and watch everything that we're doing, watch the words that we're using, and they're looking to see if we're truly men and women of God. So what we want to do is we want to, one, speak knowledge all the time. We want to be truly well-read, reading all types of books uh, about God's creation, about health, about illustrations. And we want to use illustrations like Jesus did. Know about society. Know about how things work. Know about health. Know about how the body works, physiology. Know about uh, law. Know about all these things. So that when we're making illustrations and we're connecting to specific audiences, we know how to connect with them. Ah. So there is a respect for the word of God and those who share it with upright sincerity and genuine love for the people of God. So when we think about preaching, no matter what, even if people say, oh, people don't really believe in preaching like they did in the 1920s or the 1900s or even the 1800s. Yes. You're correct, because in the 1800s, sometimes people will go and listen to a sermon for two to three hours. But that does not change the fact that for those who share the word of God effectively and those who love God and those who are called according to his perfect purpose and those who share it with uprightness and sincerity and genuine love for the people of God, there is a respect for the word of God still today. There is a respect because when you go into a church and you share the word of God effectively, and you share Jesus and you preach Jesus and you preach salvation through Jesus Christ and victory, there's a respect that people have for the word of God because the people of God respect the word of God. So when we think about what do we preach, how do we move? We are called to move according to the path that Jesus walked so that we could uphold that respect that people have for the word of God and allow that spirit and that truth to flow through our lives because we're walking according to the word of God. Leviticus 10.3, and Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy and before all the people, I must be glorified. You think about what happened to Aaron's sons in the story in the Bible, Aaron's sons were called as priests. And what did they do? They defiled the sanctuary and they died. And Moses, Moses is letting Aaron know here, I must be regarded as holy. This is what God is saying. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So as we walk as preachers, we are called to walk in righteousness. We are called to have holy lives. We are called to represent God in all that we do because there is a high level of respect behind the word of God. We are called to be holy and walk the righteous path that Jesus walked, 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are not common men. We are not to do common things. We are not to participate in common things that don't glorify God. As preachers, we are called to a, a higher standard. So this is where we have to understand we are a chosen race. We are a royal priesthood. We are a part of a holy nation. And this is where God is proclaiming his excellences through our preaching, through the words that we use, through our ministry, through our service. And we are called now to come out of the darkness places of this world, but to walk in the marvelous light and the path that God has called us to. So everything that we do in our life, we need to ask a question, will this glorify God? Will this glorify God? Everything we do, everything we speak, everything we think, every way we move, will this glorify God? And this, this question changes our lives because if it glorifies God, we move forward with all faith, all diligence. But if it does not glorify God, these are the things that are of darkness and we don't accept them in our life because we're called to a higher calling. 1 Corinthians 12, 8, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit and to another, the word of knowledge, according to the same spirit. So this is where it's shown us we are called as preachers to speak knowledge. And where does this knowledge and wisdom come from? It comes from this Holy Spirit teaching us, guiding us, filling us with the word that we're sharing with others. And this is where, when we look at our calling, when we look at our calling, right? 
when we truly look at our calling, one of the things that we need to understand is this, that God has called us to be content. You know, be content with what you're doing. Somebody asked me before, oh, I'm running a ministry. How do I start to get paid? How do I start to get paid these uh, big checks? Big and I, and I was basically letting them know, listen, when we go into the gospel, we're going in to preach the gospel of Jesus. We're not going in to try to be rich. We're not going in to try to impress others. We're going in because God called us. God called us to something special. God called us to something special, 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 special. And this is where I want to really invite everybody right now as preachers. If you're going to preach the word of God, preach it in a way where you know that everything you do is special. Everything you do for Jesus is special. Everything you do for Jesus. So as we look at what God is calling us to do, we are called to be content, to share the gospel and the will of God, and to do the will of God in our lives, and to be content. First Timothy 6, 6 to 12 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some having wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So now we see, right, that if we are called to preach the gospel, that's the greatest gift we have in our lives. The greatest gift we have in our lives is to preach the gospel. We are called to be content with that. If you are able to preach Jesus, amen, be happy. If you have food to eat, if you have clothing, if you have a, a roof over your head, you are blessed, you are rich because we are so unworthy to preach this, but God makes us worthy. And here we are sharing the gospel with others. Be content as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. These are the keys to having a successful preaching life according to the word of God. If, if we want to preach, become better preachers, this is what we're called to do as ambassadors. Walk in righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek godliness. Seek faith through the hearing of the word of God. As you are reading the word of God, become more faithful. Become more loving. Learn more about the love of Jesus. That's how your preaching gets better. Learn more about the patience of Jesus. That's how your preaching gets better. Learn more about the meekness of Jesus. That's how your preaching gets better. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay on to eternal life. And this is where I want to call, make an appeal right now. I don't know where you are in your life right now. But if you are know you have the calling of God over your life to preach Jesus, make sure that you are making the decision right now today to say, Lord, I want to walk in righteousness. Lord, I want to walk in godliness. Lord, I want the faith of Jesus. I want the patience of Jesus. I want the love of Jesus in my heart. I want the meekness of Jesus. I want to fight the good fight of faith. I want to lay hold on that promise of eternal life. This is how we become better preachers for Jesus. It starts with the root. It starts with the foundation. It starts with us really getting our lives to a place where we're like, it's not any of me. It's all of you. It's all of you, Jesus. I want to preach Jesus effectively, and I can't do it on my own. I need that godliness. I need that faith. I need that love. I need that patience. And if that's you today, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you so that we can be used by God in a mighty way to share his word more effectively. And it starts with these things, seeking these things every day, not for the fame, not for the glory, not for the money, not for the profit, not for anything, but glorifying God and walking the same way Jesus walked and being content that God's will is being done in our lives because he's using us as a vessel. And that is the greatest accomplishment that we could achieve in this world being at the feet of Jesus, surrendering our lives, and having us, him use us in a mighty way. Amen? Let's pray. Father in heaven, bless us now as we go out to preach your word, preach your gospel. Help us to become more effective by becoming more godly, by surrendering 
our lives to you and letting you come in and abide in us by being more loving, being more faithful, being more forgiving, being more patient, being more kind, loving your people more, working for souls, giving our lives for the gospel, for the preaching of the gospel in all the world, around the whole world, and doing it fearlessly and faithfully, being connected to you, being connected to the Holy Spirit, filling us with our words, preaching from the word of God, and transforming lives through your power and for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much for all you've done for us. We love you for dying for us on the cross. We love you for giving us this, this opportunity to preach your word, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done in my life, and thank you for all you've done for the people that may listen to this one day. I pray you'll bless them in their preaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you all. Uh, continue to join us. We are going through these 28 series. This was series number four. Continue to join us. And I want to make an invitation. If you would like to partner with us and do something at your church, whether it be digitally, in person, I would like for you to share this. We have our flyers. We have these invites. Share this with your church. Share this digital lay preaching seminar. Share this with your church. We're going through 28 series. The good thing about it is if anybody watches these 28 series, the goal is that they will know how to preach better, powerful, biblical sermons that are more effective for Jesus Christ. Next video, we're going to be talking about preaching to save souls. So please continue to join us. You can find all these videos at our YouTube channel and adventpreaching.com. And we're going to be going through a 28-part training series so that everyone who watches this can know how to share the gospel more effectively. That's our mission, to train and equip more lay preachers to share the gospel in a time like this. Thank you so much. Please keep this ministry in prayer. And I pray that you can be blessed and we can be blessed and we all can learn together how to preach Jesus more effectively and to win as many souls that we can in a time like this for the kingdom of heaven. God bless you all and thank you for supporting our ministry.